Patients who have chronic long-standing liver disease are at a risk of developing uh, extensive scar tissue in the liver or cirrhosis. Um, and patients with cirrhosis can then further develop complications related to their liver disease, life-threatening complications such as fluid in the belly, bleeding veins, confusion, and liver cancer. Uh, the most common causes of cirrhosis in the United States are hepatitis C, alcohol, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Um, we try to medically treat these complications, uh, but eventually uh, the best long-term treatment for these patients is a liver transplant. When we see a patient with advanced liver disease, our goal as a hepatologist is uh, to prevent them from ever getting a transplant or needing a transplant. Um, but when the complications become so advanced, uh, that's when we refer patients for transplant. So when a patient is listed for transplant, the timing of transplantation is dependent on two major factors. One is their blood type, and two is the severity of their disease. Um, the severity of their disease um, is reflected in their MELD score. Uh, which stands for model end-stage liver disease. The MELD score is made up of three blood tests, which are either direct or indirect functions of the liver. The higher your score is, the more priority you get for liver transplant. When a patient is referred for transplant, they meet an entire group of uh, team members. Um, they meet us, the medical hepatologists. They meet our transplant surgeons. Um, they, many patients will also meet with our psychiatric team and social work team to deal with a lot of the emotional and financial issues which come with, that come with transplant. When the operation is complete, patients are sent to our transplant ICU. On average, they're there for about a week and then sent to a specialty medicine floor where the nurses are specialized in caring for transplant patients. Uh, the prognosis uh, in most patients that undergo transplant is very good. Most of our patients are out of the hospital within about a month um, and then follow up very closely in our post-transplant clinic uh, with both um, the surgeons and the medical hepatologist. A transplant coordinator is designated to each patient to oversee their entire care. And while we're seeing these patients, uh, we make an effort to communicate very closely with their primary care and their referring physician. UPMC has a long history of liver transplant under the Starzl Transplantation Institute. It's not enough to have great surgeons and hepatologists. In order to have a successful transplant program, you need pathologists, radiologists, critical care, medicine physicians, and nurses and coordinators that are able to care for these patients. Um, and in UP, at UPMC, I think we have all of those critical pieces.